now I'm even more excited to tell you that uh, these shows are made with so much love and so much care and some of the best writing that we've ever seen in television and I'm very, very proud of our showrunners and I'm gonna bring them out now and they are Chris Dingus, Tara Butters, and Michelle Fizikas. We'll go to that way. Middle. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hello. Thank you. Thank you. You guys, of course, are not strangers to Comic Con. No, we're not. Uh, <laughs> we were the first time we were here as a panelist was on uh, the pilot of Reaper. Uh, we were on Kevin. We have Reaper fans out there. Very cool. I was conceived on the convention floor in 1973. <laughs> I, I'm ashamed to say I was there. Uh, not in the conceiving part, in the Fine, no. part. You like um, to watch. <laughs> uh, you had to go there, didn't you? Uh, the, the, the real challenge of season one was finding an actor that could personify someone who existed in comics for a very long time uh, and who also, at the same time, existed as a voice and is now played by a different actor and I, I, what I can just tell you is, is that when we first sat down and decided that the person who was going to be following Agent Carter on her adventures uh, was going to be uh, Jarvis. And uh, we, we looked high, we looked low, and we all agreed that there was the right person for it if we could just get him, and that person is James Darcy. This is his first Comic-Con, does not know what to suspect. He, 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 said, he said that it was, it, we walked over and of course they took us through the back way and the tunnels and stuff and he turned to me and he said, this, this doesn't seem very crowded. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I may have been wrong. <laughs> um, I'm very proud to say that you can't do Agent Carter without Agent Carter. Uh, it is our extraordinary pleasure every day to get to work with Haley Atwell. Two other people who are very important to this show who could not make it, they're off making a, a little movie called Captain America Civil War. Uh, and that would be Kevin Feige and Lou Desposito. This is the one show that Marvel Television makes with Marvel Studios. Uh, Lewis has been uh, one of the champions of this. He directed the short, he directed the the pilot, and I can honestly tell you that I don't know that any of us would be here without Lewis championing it all the way. So a big thank you to Lewis, and a big shout out to everybody out in Captain America land. Um, so guys, welcome to Comic Con. <laughs> is this your first right? time? Uh, this is uh, a little different than the last time we did this when no one really knew who we were. Uh, and I, I guess we'll, I'll just start out with, with talking to Tara, Michelle, and Chris. Um, what's it like having a, a little eight episodes that suddenly the world is talking about? I, I remember walking through, uh, I think, the Marriott last year with you um, and telling Haley, you're never going to be able to do this again, <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> and it is kind of amazing to see, to kind of walk around with her, and everybody kind of gets all excited, and it's so cool to see all the cosplay that I've seen of her. Um, and I have to say the fan art. I Tara buys everything on Etsy, yeah. literally everything on Etsy. If there's fan art and you've put it up for sale, I've probably, probably <laughs> bought it. Um, 
but I, I just love that expression of the fans and how they love the show. And I'm really happy because we love it so much, and I really wanted people to like it, um, and I'm, I'm glad that they did. It's the best job we've ever had. Oh, yeah, it's amazing. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. <laughs> yeah, <great. laughs> we love each other so much. Uh, so when we started out, the hunt for Jarvis, uh, James, you had some uh, questions. I, I, I think I was going to go with misgivings, um, but you certainly had to sort of know, as an actor, how to play this part. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, when you first started out, when you first got a call from us and we all said, come play, please come play. I, I, well, I was slightly worried because in the, um, in the pilot, Jarvis is making a souffle. <laughs> and um, I can't actually make a souffle. And I, and, I, and I was worried that I would be required to actually do any of you who've made a souffle will know it's a, it's a complex process and you've got to time it just right. So my apprehension mainly revolved around souffle making. And um, I can do a perfect spotted dick. <laughs> That's an English that? pudding. Uh, <laughs> but I'm not so good at the souffles. So uh, we, we had a long conversation about that, and then they explained to me what acting is. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and that I would not... Well, fact, what was great, I, though, is, is, that, is that no one's ever played an English butler before. So this was a, a right. new thing for you. To I'm be able treading to do. very new territory here. <laughs> um, and actually, the thing that, the thing that really uh, sold it to me was when... Michelle and Tara, Chris and Jeff said to me, oh, no, 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 but he's going to be with her on the missions. And I said, oh, great, so there's going to be some fighting. And, uh, and they went, we were done. <laughs> yeah, Haley's going to be doing a lot of fighting. <laughs> and I said, and Jarvis will be behind her doing some fighting. And they went, Thank you That's that. how Chris actually talks, just to let you know. Uh, and, and having read the script, it was, it was so funny what they had already written for Jarvis. And I've never actually had an opportunity to do anything comedic on film before. And I wasn't at all sure that I could do it. Uh, but it turns out... You guys think that, that you can I do it? Have to... <laughs> what? Thank you for the vote of confidence. <laughs> it turns out I just had to be my usual Wally of a self, and it, and it would work out just fine. Uh, you actually brought up something that, that uh, I, I should also mention, was that you read the first script, and that, that script was written by uh, two of our other executive producers that we're also very lucky to have, and that's Chris Marcus and Steve McFeely. They also could not be here because having written Captain America, the first Avenger, and having written Captain America, the Winter Soldier, they have just finished writing and are on the set at Captain America Civil War. So, uh, we just have a little bit of a pedigree here, a little bit that we're very proud of. Um, speaking of very proud of, Healy Atwell. Uh, aside from being the only person I'd let take my hat, uh, Tell us about Peggy. Like, you've now played Peggy. Uh, well, you've played Peggy in two features, a short, and eight episodes, soon now to be 10 more episodes. <laughs> what is it about that character that uh, takes you off the big screen and into our homes? Uh, I think, first of all, the quality of the writing. And it was very clear in the script that, um, you know, we'd seen aspects of Peggy in the first Avenger, but on, in this show in particular, there were so many nuances of character, and she was dynamic and resourceful and fun and sexy and vulnerable, and all these qualities that, that uh, I really enjoy playing. And so I, um, I jumped at the chance to do it for the very reason that also I, I'd known the Marvel team for five years, and love them dearly and um, she's just kind of kind of taken over my life in such an amazing way she's quite fearless and I often find when I'm having moments of kind of doubting what I'm doing I think that she she wouldn't she just goes for it so she kind of thrusts herself into situations with such kind of um, kind of wild abandonment that uh, that I I, uh, I love that opportunity so it's changed my life 
Yeah. Uh, <laughs> true story. We uh, we had the script and uh, and we had Haley's interest, but it's always uh, a challenge when you have someone and you want to make sure that they're coming on board. And she came into the Marvel offices and and went through our little quiet security, because as you know, there is no Marvel security. Uh, actually, I'm hoping that no one here is actually recording anything because you're not going to leave here alive. Uh, and, and we get to keep your phone and it's bad, so don't do that. Anyway, uh, and so you went in, I remember you went into a, a little locked room uh, with a script, which she, she then had to give back. Uh, as soon as she was done reading, and uh, you had sort of the most amazing reaction because you went in with like all these questions, like you were prepared to like grill us. Yeah, and go, I was. Well, do you think you could change? Is it? Uh, and then what happened when you came out? I just, yeah, it's... that's how we talk as executive <laughs> producers. <laughs> um, I just, well, I just loved her, and I want, I really hoped that um, you know the writers would get her right. I was really adamant about about that, and uh, I just read the script the first time and just came out, and I think I just went, oh, she's amazing, <laughs> and I had nothing to say but but compliments. It was, uh, I just think, you know, we were also working with a group of such talented and skillful writers. It's it's all on the page, and it feels like you just have to turn up and say the lines, and all the work's kind of done for you. So I've been very lazy, actually. And can, and can we? Can I add to that? Actually, that that you know, an, a show that is set in the '40s so requires some period dialogue, but also with two of the main characters being English. That's an extraordinary skill that m quite a lot of British writers wouldn't be able to to pull off to write period English dialogue. And you guys, our writers, have just so beautifully come up with words that. I would never dare to use. Um, you know, and they found these fantastic period dialogue for us and... Uh, Hello! <laughs> like that? Like that. <laughs> uh, I am told that we can open the, the floor to some Q&A. Is there a thing and a thing? Oh, there we go. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I'm Haley. I'm Haley. Uh, so I'm I, guess I, I guess I start with... The guy in the Captain America shirt. Oh, look at that! You have like a little television and everything. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, my name is DJ. My question is for Haley Atwell. Do you feel that your character's decision to pour out Captain America's blood uh, at the end of the season um, was right, even though sh uh, Steve was the only one to survive or volunteer for Operation Rebirth? Yeah, I do think it was absolutely the right decision because uh, she'd been holding on to him for the whole season, not really being able to move on. She was grieving him, and I think by the end of the season she'd grown, and she, it was her way of getting closure and letting him go, and it was a burial for her in a way. Um, I think also she was just concerned that if it had gone into the wrong hands, then um, someone would abuse that power. And I think keeping, keeping him alive through the work that she was doing and the memory of him served him better. Um, but I think it also makes it more bittersweet and just makes it for a better story. And, and we shot that on, on the Brooklyn Bridge in New York, didn't we? Oh, yeah. 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 Do you guys want to talk at all? That, that's actually one of our big partners uh, in the show is, is ILM. And uh, you, you guys have heard of ILM. It's a little <laughs> special effects house. Uh, Michelle, do you want to talk a little bit about how, how helpful that is and, and how we built of, all of this? This is one of the benefits of working with Marvel is that people want to go into business with Marvel. Um, and so ILM has obviously done a bunch of work for the Marvel feature side, had never done TV. Um, and I think we're a little hesitant about doing it for a lot less money and a lot less time, but they were such fans of the material. I've actually worked on a, a lot of different shows that used... Uh, visual effects, um, and it's some of the best work I've ever seen. You actually went up and visited them. The, yes, it was amazing to get a tour of ILM and see movies and stuff that you've seen growing up and see the assets there. But the, the amazing thing for us was when you're having to build a city, they have 30 years worth of assets they were able to call on in their library and rejigger for us to help make New York City come to life which was a big part of our show. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we have another question. Hi, this Hi. question is for Haley. 
uh, I wanted to know what your favorite line from the show was that you feel like summed up the themes of the show because the I know my value line was pretty awesome. Well, it's, I mean, every, it must be, I mean, everyone knows the line that defined Peggy and it's, you know, it's something that has kind of touched a lot of people that I've met at conventions over the world in the last few months, but it's, I know my value. Uh, anyone else's opinion doesn't really matter. Um, and that's, I think, for me, something that she, she discovers over time and that she doesn't need praise from anyone because she, um, she has determination and purpose and she's kind of living out her destiny and with the support of the right people around her. And, um, and I, it's been amazing going to these conventions and meeting especially young people, young boys and girls coming up to me and going, oh, I know my value too, and thinking, oh, my oh. God. <laughs> it just melts my heart. It's so humbling. Um, and I think that's kind of that what, that's what gives Peggy in the first season real depth. She has, she's a, a, a very independent spirit. Um, but then at the same time, you know, there's that wonderful scene that I love where uh, Jarvis is talking to her and saying, you can't run away from people that are trying to help you. And, and you realize in that moment that he sees her vulnerability and that in, uh, in putting up this wall from having lost Steve, she's scared of letting other people in. And Jarvis is the person, kind of like a, a kind of kindred spirit, who's gently tapping on the shoulder to tell her that she's not alone. So um, I think he has some pretty fabulous lines too. I, I just, I, I'd be remiss. There is, in the show, there is a Captain America radio show, and, uh, and, and there's, there's somebody on this panel who does one of the voices. Uh, take us back to the 1940s, would you? Welcome to the Captain America Adventure Hour. <laughs> That's mortifying, <laughs> Jeff. Uh, now, guys, we're uh, season two, something new. Where, uh, where are we off to? We are off to Hollywood. <laughs> so, uh, so it's, it, we're in the 1940s, we're still in the same time, and uh, we're, we're moving uh, everybody sort of lock, stock, and barrel off to sunny California. In a, in a sense, it's, it's 1947, so we're saying it's about six months after the show ended, and things are different. We'll start and, we'll, and, and we'll, you know, we'll see people are in different positions, and people are actually, not everyone is in New York anymore, um, and there, there's some history that we're not quite sure, and some people aren't talking to each other anymore, um, and then Peggy will get called to Los Angeles to help investigate a murder. Uh, uh, 47 Los Angeles was the same year as the Black Dahlia murder. Um, so we really love the idea of the sort of glamour of old Hollywood and the sort of classic sort of film noir grit and crime of Los Angeles. So we're kind of really having fun. And it, it, the, the stories that it's it, it just changing the location generate such great stories and great interaction between the characters. And are, are we leaving dear Jarvis home? Does he get to come no, along? Jarvis is actually already there. He's been there uh, helping uh, Howard start to set up his new estate in Beverly Hills, and he's doing some contract work for the government, and just as a hobby, decided to open a movie studio. <laughs> <laughs> can, I, can I ask a question? Yes. <laughs> I, I might not be able to answer. Am I going to get to meet my wife, finally? <laughs> Does he get to cast it? He, he um, might get to. I'm not sure you guys get to. <laughs> uh, look, at, we got stuff here. Uh, wow. Who, Hello. Who, what do we got? An, another Hi. question or a song. She made the dress. Yeah. Hi, my name is Chella. My name is Zoe. My name is Adria. And I'm Julie. And we have a question about season two. Uh, so we're wondering if we'll see any historical people or places and what will we see about uh, Peggy's life after Captain America in terms of relationships? That's a good well, question. Well, Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> uh, 
won't be in the show. Historic uh, places, I would say. You know, we're hopefully. I mean, we're we're talking about sort of really iconic Los Angeles places that um, haven't really changed much since the '40s. Um, so if we can if we can do it, we'll we'll, we'll shoot there. Famous people. Uh, Really, I tend to try but, not to but movie stars and swimming pools and palm trees and that sort of thing. No, no plans for actual historic figures, but until just now. <laughs> <laughs> and then, will we see? Uh, I would say that Peggy um, has has put Steve's sort of memory to rest and uh, has a couple of new opportunities. Ooh. <laughs> She's a whore. No. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah. She's uh, and, and, and I think on that, because we have, a, we have still more show for you, uh, I very much would like to thank Chris, Tara, Michelle, James, and Haley.